I'm Rob from B&H, and in this video, we're going to check out Tascam's DR60D Linear PCM Recorder. If you're a DSLR video shooter looking to improve your audio capture, then listen up because the DR60D has been designed just for you. Let's take a look, and while we do, we might as well put it to use recording the audio from my lav mic for this video. Anybody who's ever shot video on a DSLR figures out pretty quickly that the camera's built-in microphone is fairly limited. XLR microphones and adapters can make a big improvement in sound quality, but minimizing the noise from the camera's less than stellar preamps can be a little tricky, which is why we generally recommend a dual system solution where the audio is recorded on a separate device other than the camera, like a portable audio recorder, for example. Well, the DR60D takes a lot of the features that we like about portable audio recorders, XLR and quarter-inch inputs, low noise, high-quality preamps, phantom power, four-channel recording, etc., and reconfigures them specifically for the DSLR shooter, although sound professionals looking for a small, inexpensive, versatile field recorder will find a lot to like about this unit as well. The form factor is quite nice. It's plastic, but solidly built in line with modern DSLR setups. The quarter 20 thread at the bottom allows you to mount the DR60D to a tripod, while the quarter 20 bolt on top allows you to attach your DSLR camera. The screen and all your necessary controls are laid out right in front of you and easily accessible. Alternately, a sound man can attach a strap to the handles here and wear it just like you would a field mixer. The DR60D records audio to SD and SDHC cards of up to 32 gigabyte capacity. Audio is recorded as WAV files and broadcast WAV format or BWF files are supported. Recording resolutions are either 16-bit or 24-bit and rates of 44.1, 48, and 96 kilohertz are available. Power is supplied by four AA batteries. Operating time will vary depending on the kind of battery, the format you're using, and whether or not you have phantom power for mics engaged. So for example, using alkaline batteries with 48 volts phantom power engaged and recording two channels of 16-bit 44.1 audio, you'll get about two and a half hours of operating time. On the other hand, with high quality NIMH batteries and phantom power off, you get about six hours of operating time at 16-bit 44.1 kilohertz. You could also purchase the Tascam PSP515U AC adapter or the BP6AA external battery pack and plug either one into the mini USB port. Unlike the portable audio recorders you may be used to, there are no built-in microphones on the DR60D. But for what the unit is designed to do, they aren't really needed. Many users are going to mount the recorder to their camera setup, and the distance is generally too far from the subject to get good quality sound. Instead, the DR60D offers multiple options for plugging in external microphones as well as line level sources. On the side are the inputs for both mic and line level signals, two combo quarter inch XLRs and a stereo mini input. The combo inputs each have switchable phantom power for condenser mics at either 24 or 48 volts. That 24 volt option is cool since if you're using a mic that only needs 24 volts, you can get more battery life. Also, plug-in power is available on the mini input for consumer microphones that require it. Setting input levels is done with a combination of menu adjustments and old-fashioned knob twiddling, and like a lot of Tascam products, I found the menu system easy and intuitive to use. There's an indenting data knob in the forward, rewind, and stop buttons also page through menus. In addition, the quick button will take you right to commonly accessed functions like gain settings, EQ, the delete function, and others. The combo inputs offer high, mid, and low gain settings, while the mini input offers only high and low. Then finer adjustments are made using the respective knobs below the screen. That is really handy. I love that if I need to make a quick adjustment on the levels, I don't have to go paging through menus to do it. I can just reach over and grab the knob. I also appreciated the red LED peak lights to alert me if the input levels are too hot. They can get your attention, say if you happen to be looking at the camera instead of your input levels. The inputs also feature a low cut option switchable to remove frequencies below 120, 80, or 40 hertz to help reduce wind, mechanical, and handling noise. Each input also has a limiter, and the limiters on inputs 1 and 2 can be linked, as well as the ones on inputs 3 and 4, helping to give you smoother attenuation on stereo sources. 
The DR60D offers five different recording modes to choose from. Mono and stereo modes are self-explanatory, but it also offers dual mono and dual stereo options, which means a second backup file is created at anywhere from 0 to 12 dB lower in volume. That way, if you get a couple of overloads on your main recording, the backup might be okay, which is a great feature. Four-channel recording is also available, which will record the four external inputs as two stereo files. The DR60D is also capable of mid-side microphone decoding, and you can choose whether you want that decoding done in the recording or the playback stage. Also, if your mics are at different distances, the inputs can be delayed plus or minus up to 150 milliseconds to compensate for phase problems. There are two additional mini jacks on the side of the DR60D, and these help you to interface with your DSLR camera. The mini jack with independent gain knob labeled camera out allows you to record audio from the DR60D to your DSLR's audio track. That makes for a handy guide track later when you sync your audio and video in post. We're actually using it today for this video. The auto tone option can also help with sync issues by automatically putting a tone at the beginning of the recording, or you can manually hit the slate button during the recording process. The other mini jack, labeled camera in, allows you to monitor playback from the camera from the headphone or line out mini jacks on the side. Although you'll have to enable that monitoring function in the menu. Also on this side is the hold button, which when engaged locks the other buttons out, potentially saving you from an accidental take ruining button mispress. A slick auto record feature is also on board with quite a bit of control available. The thresholds for beginning a recording and ending can be set independently. And when signal goes below that threshold, you can pause recording on the same file until the start threshold is reached again, or have the DR60D start a new file, or simply add a marker there. The end delay option is also a nice touch, giving you up to five extra seconds of recording time after signal falls below the end threshold for an extra measure of safety. There's also a pre-record feature, giving you up to two seconds of recording time before you hit the button. And of course, that can be a lifesaver if you're just a little late on the button press in the field. You can also delay the recording start for about a third of a second to avoid recording the sound of the button press. In addition, there's a self-timer that can be engaged to begin recording at either 2 or 10 seconds after the button press. Maximum file sizes are set in advance and a new file is created automatically with no pause in the recording when the maximum is exceeded. Files can also be divided as well as marked, allowing you to get back to important sections in a take quickly. For playing back files, the DR60D features a level align option that will boost the level on quiet recordings as well as a three band EQ. There's also a mixer section allowing you to adjust the levels and panning position of files on playback, which is especially helpful when you're playing back those four channel recordings. Transferring files to your Mac or PC is easy. You can simply remove the SD card and pop it into your machine, or leave it in the DR60D and move files back and forth via the USB connection. In terms of negatives, there's really not a lot. Some users may find the DR60D a little heavy, weighing about a pound and a half with the four AA batteries inside. It's not really a problem on a tripod, but for handheld shooting, it could be a bit cumbersome. But considering the feature set and smart form factor, I thought a pound and a half seemed quite reasonable. Also, as I mentioned earlier, the strap handles on the front mean that a sound man can wear it like other portable field recorders and mixers, although some sound guys and girls may find having only two XLR inputs a bit limiting, but having more would probably make the unit larger, heavier, and more expensive. And the price point of the DR60D is one of its best selling points. It's a really affordable quality solution for DSLR shooters on a budget. So there you have it, with a great form factor, well thought out feature set, and quality preamps, the Tascam DR60D should be a big hit with DSLR shooters and sound professionals. I'm Rob from B&H. Thanks for watching. For more information, please visit us online, give us a call, or stop by our New York City Superstore. You can also connect with us on the web.